loose round. I'm glad I'm not a judge oh, wow. or a celebrity panelist. Was that a Ooh, was that a was that a, that was that a cum shot Chimayev? Calls the doctor in to look at it. Triple C, C man, look at that the eye, man. A cum shot Chimayev. <laughs> that might be putting it lightly, man. That guy can't see at all. Like not even blurriness, man. That thing is just out completely out look at that thing oh my god that is like oh that makes me just not want to ever fight again jesus well triple c now that we saw that what's your worst mma injury honestly schmo i'm gonna have to say a broken heart dude how, how is it that you could train how is it that you could feel good if your heart is broken you know what i'm saying like well, that's the that's the living worst you know what i'm talking about well, tell the audience what you're talking about, Mr. Broken Heart. <laughs> no, nah, man. My worst injury was actually uh, having bulging disc in my neck, man. I think, like, the neck injury is the worst, dude. I've had injuries everywhere from, uh, you know what? I've never had a knee injuries or anything like that. I, obviously, I just had, like, my, my uh, rotator, cr uh, you know, the rotator cuff, but nothing crazy. I mean, I, that thing's actually kind of nasty. But I'm going to have to say the bulging disc. The bulging discs are the worst. Dude, you can't look down at your phone. Like, it's... Uh, it's terrible, Shmo. So I'm about to say the neck. Okay, Triple C, you made quite the stir last week when we debuted your top five MMA fighters all time. You put yourself ahead of GSP. You got some explaining to do to the people, shall you? I do, man. You know what? The more I thought about it, man, it's like... I can't put myself at number four. There's one thing that Triple C does do. He doesn't lie. I'm going to have to put GSP at number four. You know what? Nine tile defenses. I think the biggest thing is I was just like, but I will say this. I am the greater champ champ. So I have it. John Jones, number one. Demetrius Johnson, number two. Anderson Silva, number three. With 10 title defenses. George St. Pierre, number four. I'm gonna, I, I, I knocked myself out of Goat Mountain. I'm going to have to put myself at number five. But I will say this, Schmo, I am the greatest champ champ ever, and that's where I will say that I am better than, than GSP and, and my accolades. But he deserves the number four slot. He's officially in Goat Mountain. And uh, we'll see, man. Maybe if I win this, this, this third title with, with Strokonovsky, I will bump him all off. Oh, the fans have swayed you over. But there's one thing that GSP doesn't have better than you, and that's hair. This episode... Right here, we always use it. Brought to you by Blue Mountain, the fist sample. Styling that hair nice for that firm hold. Triple C, how about that Blue Mond? Oh, man, I love Blue Mond. I use it every time my girl loves it. She likes to put her, her, her tall fingers through my hair. Man, I am styling, profiling people. Go get that Blue Mond or bend the knee. 10% off. Use the promo code SHMO. Here's that link right here. And speaking of styling and profiling, happy 73rd birthday to the legend, Ric Flair. Woo! And with that said, <laughs> welcome back to the Triple C Ed Schmo Show. I'm the Schmo, my partner, the champ champ, Olympic gold medalist, Mr. Henry Cejudo. Let's go, Schmo, because time is money and money is time. And over this past weekend, the Schmo was there in the Apex UFC Vegas 49. Islam Makachev did what Islam Makachev said he was going to do. He defeated Bobby Green. It was a dominant performance. It was within two rounds. And now, Triple C, is this man worthy of the title shot in the lightweight division? Well, I don't think nobody wants to fight him. I think I think uh, he's a, he reminds me a lot of... of, of uh, uh, Hamza Chimaev, dude, like he's he's very vicious up top. His top control is nasty. I mean, these guys are sipping on the same Kool Aid. I don't think nobody in the top five wants to fight. And I like Dariush, but I could see the same. I could see Islam doing this exact same thing to him too. You know, th this this dude, nobody wants to fight him. He deserves that title shot. Him and him and the winner out of Gaethje and, and Oliveira is gonna be a uh, it's gonna be a banger because Oliveira is not. If Oliveira wins, he's he's not afraid to go on bottom. You don't even want uh, Oliver on bottom or top. That's a very, very well-rounded human being, and uh, it's a trip, man. I'm, I'm excited to see that fight whenever it is that it, uh, that it comes about, if Gaethje doesn't take him out first. But when you look at this guy, Islam, when you look to him top to bottom, what makes him completely unstoppable? Because that's what it seems like every single time he enters the octagon. Okay, Shmo, I don't want to say unstoppable either. You know, the, the, the way you beat a guy like Islam is... 
You find a guy that could defend takedowns. You got you find a guy that has good striking, good discipline on the distance game, and uh, that's able to keep it on the feet. You keep it on the feet. You don't have to worry about the takedowns. But the, the problem is, is these guys are getting into flurries with them, and they're letting them into that distance. And once that dude grabs a hold of you, once he puts you against the cage, that's when these guys do not give that free space. And that's the difference, Schmo. These guys are literally, Islam is literally attacking these dudes. And once he gets you against the cage, and once he gets to your legs, like he knows that's the time that he's going to eat. He, he knows that's the opportunity where he has to finish the fight. And he has been. All right, well, the Schmo's going to take this to a whole different level here because at the post-fight press conference, we asked Islam if he gets that lightweight strap, hypothetically speaking, he defends the belt because he had this fight with Bobby Green and catch weight at 160 pounds. Would he consider going up to 170 pounds and fighting for the title? Getting that champ-champ status, he liked it. He smiled. Those Dagestan guys don't smile often. He liked it. He likes the sounds of it. And let's just say, hypothetically, we have in the Islam versus Hamza Chamaev at 170. Now that is the fight the Schmo wants to see. Hypothetically speaking, of course, if he takes care of business against the winner of Gaethje and Oliveira. No, of course, of course, too, though. But keep in mind, too, though, Schmo, it's like Chamaev is probably more experienced in wrestling. And his top control is just about as good as Islam's. You know, so I think the underdog in that fight would actually be Islam, as good as he is. And, you know, they're both friends of mine. But just for the simple fact that the size will make a difference when, the, when stylistically the matchups are like that. So this would, this, would be, this, would be a, this would be a fight that would be very, very much be neutralized. It would be a wrestling match pretty much. Well, the schmo doesn't want to get too far ahead of that, but uh, we'll save that for another time. So stylistically, Islam against Gaethje or Oliveira? How do you think it all plays out? Who do you think he'll be fighting for the lightweight strap? Well, stylistically, I can say that his 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 better matchup would probably be against Gaethje, uh, because I think uh, because Khabib's already he's 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 demonstrating how is it that that he beat uh, Gaethje with all due respect to Gaethje. Um, the the unknown right now is Charles Oliveira, but I think also that you know the toughest matchup for Charles Oliveira is probably going to be a it's either going it's either going to be uh it's, it's it's well right now his toughest matchup is going to be his this next fight which is going to be Justin Gaethje but stylistically for him too it is Islam because Islam's top control is no joke and it's different with jiu-jitsu too because when somebody's literally going in there and striking throwing elbows you know uh, making you work making you get up you know what I'm saying so. Yeah, I, 155 is on fire, and I'm just anybody could be champ at any given day. Well, speaking of being on fire, Coach Habib is on fire, just like you, Coach Henry Cejudo. When the schmo had Javier Mendez on the podcast, he was talking about you as Coach of the Year. He's talking about Khabib as Coach of the Year. He even brought up Kane Velasquez. So let's play this clip for you right here. What a great coach Kane is! What a great coach! Unbelievable. He he if he devotes the time. And the energy, just like him and Habib, those two guys will go neck to neck to see who's going to be the greatest coach. And I think Henry Segudo is right in that that mix too. And Henry may be a little bit further ahead than those two guys are because he's already showing by what he's doing, producing the champions that Henry already has. And people are seeking out Henry's, uh, you know, tutelage. You know, rightfully so. He, he's done great with him, right? He's confident, and Henry knows what he's talking about. Well, I think Cain Velasquez and Habib have the same qualities, if not more. Ooh. Henry Ooh, Segudo. Oh, well, well, I don't know about that, Javier Menes, but that's good, man. That's your loyalty to your boys. And Javier, you know what's crazy, Schmo? That ha Javier Mendez at one point was about to become my coach. He was the first person to give me pads. Cain Velasquez asked me to come out to, uh, you know, to to AKA at that time. This was back in 2008, 2009 to train with him. And I remember training with Javier Menes, and I really liked him. I remember the first time I literally, the first time I've ever, ever, ever hit pads. And Javier Mendes will tell you this, man. It's like I had like a welt from kicking so hard. And that was literally like the first time. It's like learning how to walk for the first time. So it was a trip. But Javier Mendes, I'm going to tell you something, Javier. I am gonna, I'm going to so win this, this coach of the year, man. Not even in comparison, man. My knowledge, my expertise in mixed martial arts and combat sports is second to none. I have Wei Li, who lost in a split decision to, to Rose Namus. In my eyes, she won. She was literally... 
literally, she won those first three rounds. Go back and watch that fight. David Sikafredo retained his title. Listen to my game plan. We got Yuri Provachka, who's about to become the light heavyweight champ. We got the Korean zombie, who is about to take that midget's head, Alexander the Average, way back to Australia. And we have the legendary John Jones, the greatest of all time. These are all the guys that are searching for King Triple C, not to mention Calvin Costello, Mark Madsen. And guess what? Chris Cyber is about to jump ship too. So don't, don't mention just one little guy because I have about anywhere between five and six world titles coming this year of 2022. Well, if I think that a coach gets three gold titles in one calendar year, you're 100% the coach of the year. So uh, you bring that gold yeah, to but, fight yeah, ready. But we, yeah, but this is what I'm afraid of, Schmo. And, and, and I hope we, we can tag all these damn social media sites that – that that they will go back and give it to give it to the likable fighter. You know what I'm saying? Like facts, dude. When I when I had two belts, when I was double champ, I had two belts. I should have been ranked pound for pound at that time. Nor Jones, nor did Khabib have that, and I felt like I had that. Defended both of my belts, and uh, you know what I'm saying. I'm just afraid that they're gonna pull that same thing on me. With all due respect to Jones and Khabib, but at the time when I retired, man, I felt like I was pound for pound. The way that I was finishing, in the fashion that I was doing it, not according to the style, like because I, I am. A wrestler anyways that being said what i'm afraid schmo is they'll probably end up giving it to khabib or somebody else just due to the fact that i don't know you know what i'm saying the persona the cringe i don't know that's that's kind of more what i'm afraid of because the year is young triple c let's not get all sabotage on us now when we're only here in march now talk to the schmo for a second Why? yeah but, yeah yeah but schmo but what you think of my list who has a list like that as a matter of fact well not no only one am I but, but hang on, Let, let's get, we'll get back to this in one second. Why didn't you stay with Coach Javier Mendez? I can't let you off the hook. You, you hit pads with him. Why didn't you stay with him at the beginning of the career? Um. Well, no, I just went out there, and I think I went out there maybe for like a few days, and I really got his nose, and I really like Javier, man. I think I think if I would have stuck with Javier, I think I, think I would have got quicker uh, at what I was doing already because he was already, he's, he, you know, he's a knowledgeable dude. I really, uh, Javier Mendez has coached some of the best guys in the world. Uh, and, uh, anyways, I just did it because I was home. I was, I, I ended up making the, my Olympic comeback three years later. I just wanted to stay home at that time. I've been traveling my whole life. I've been doing so much. I just, I wanted to stay home, but I would have made that jump to AKA, uh, back in those early days, but just for the simple fact that I went back to the Olympics, I was like, you know what? I'm ready to stay home. And I was, I was homesick Schmo, to say, you know, there, there's a soft tie to, to triple C too. All right. There it is. Can we go back to the champ champ stuff? Because the Schmo's got a special peppered segment towards the end of this. And can we go to the silver medal moment going up to this upcoming week? UFC 272. It is here. The beef is real. Kobe Covington or Hey Masvidal. No title on the line. Main event. They should be doing the BMF title on the line, by the way. But the, listen, man. We've seen some promos come out already. Who is wrong with this beef? Is it Covington? Is it Masvidal? Honestly, I think at the end of the day, you know what's going to happen, Schmo? They're both going to hug it out and apologize and hang out. And, and you know what I'm saying? Like, it's going to be like that. This is this is what life is, man. I think, uh, I don't know, man. For some reason, I want to bang out. For some reason, I want to blame blame Kobe Covington. You know what I'm saying? Because he seems, he seems like one of those dudes that will just, you know, jip a dude. You know what I'm saying? With all due respect to Kobe, chaos, no jaw, Covington. So I don't know. My gut tells me it's Kobe. I, I can't wait. And I want to see if, if George Mavidal is going to do what he's going to do to him. If he's going to say what he's going to do. Because stylistically, Schmo, that fight, that fight kind of scares me for George. And I'm going for George. And if he has the right game plan, if he finds the right engineers and the right tricks and traits. I had even, I had even asked a buddy of mine to be like, hey, man, if George needs help, man, I can, I'd be more willing to help him because... I know that he cannot create positions with Kobe Covington because the more he creates pos wrestling positions with Kobe, the more he's going to be in Kobe's game. So he should be more. He should be doing more things like limping the leg out, uh, scrambling, doing roll throughs, kind of like a lot of what Kobe Covington, a lot of what uh, 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 Tony Ferguson is doing, like diving through the legs. Like he's got to create these scrambles and really keep keep him at bay, keep him at distance. But as soon as as soon as you start to wrestle and defend Kobe and do all these other crazy things. I, I, I think I think the ball's gonna be leaning more towards Kobe Kobe Covington. Even though I'm going for George, I'm cheering for George. I want George to win, but dude, I just I gotta tell the truth, Schmo. I just have to tell the truth. 
Well, the we- whole truth and nothing but the truth. The Schmo certainly hears it, but let's make a case for Game Bread Mosfidal. Obviously, he knows Kobe Covington's favorite moves, the sweeps, whatever he does. He stands almost upright because he's got that much confidence in his wrestling takedown defense. The coaching staff check, right there at ATT, they, they know check. about it. But let me ask you this, though. In but, but the not Usman a, fights, how come Usman did not dominate with the wrestling. Obviously, he controlled him when he wanted to control him, but he beat him standing that fight. How come Usman did not dominate him with the wrestling game in the two times he beat him? Um, because because they're both at that level. They're both kind of, you know, at, 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 at the same wrestling pedigree. You know what I'm saying? Like they're so. What happened is it nullifies it. So like these dudes, people, even wrestlers don't want to wrestle because when you wrestle and you fight, it makes somebody tired. This is why this is why I'm not impressed so much with good strikers until I start seeing them wrestle. When they can wrestle and they can strike, that's when I'm like, that's when they got the respect of the triple C because that's when I really know that they literally have a gas tank. You know, we see it all the time. Like even with the Max Holloway, when you wrestle him a little bit, when Volkanovski did wrestle him in that fight, in that fifth round, Holloway Holloway's demeanor had changed, man, because of those scrambles, because of that cage work, because of things, because he took him down, he got back up. It changes things. That's, that, this is why I'm going to disagree with you, Schmo, because the wrestling, the rest, it's not just about the sport, but it's about the experience. It's about the, the callus that it gives you. It's that grind that you cannot buy. You cannot get a black belt. You cannot get a purple belt, a white belt with it. Dude, you have to earn it. You have to really understand it. And that is Kobe's greatest gift is he understands that grind that wrestling comes with. He understands his threshold, people. So the Schmo hears you, and the Schmo does believe Kobe Covington takes down Gamebred Masvidal. But will Gamebred Masvidal stay down? Will he be able to get up? Will he be able to truly test that world-class cardio? And he knows the ins and outs. I mean, listen, man. Could this become the fight that we all expected from Ben Askren versus Gamebred Masvidal? Obviously, it ended in seven seconds, that fight. But is this the fight that we all expected that one to be? That's what the Schmo's most curious to see. Uh I, yeah, I mean, I'm sorry. Can you repeat that question, Shmo? You, uh, man, I got a, I got a little sidetracked in there. You got some you brain know? farts over there. I know yeah, you got the I newborn. Did, what yeah. I'm saying is, the Shmo is excited to see if this fight becomes the fight we all expected from Ben Askren or Hey Mosfidal. Not seven yeah. seconds knee KO. Which, by the way, you had a great reaction. You were there in the crowd. The Shmo just saw a highlight the other day. Great job. You're next to Usman. I was but like, the, whoa. But what I'm saying is, is this that fight that we expected that one to be? Is this what this fight's going to become? Well, I think Kobe's going to be a lot smarter because he knows that uh, George Masvidal's greatest gifts is his blitz. The same way that he beat Ben Ashker with that blitz knee. The same way that he beat Darren too with that blitz punch. A little cross step to that right hand, left hook. Um, I think I think he's aware of that. I think Kobe, you know, as, as, as the cringe god that he is, he's very... Uh, he, he, he's a gamer. I, I didn't see that with the Usman fight. He was a little scared. I saw his little lip quivering, but he's a gamer. You got to respect that. You got to respect the fact that he's been in there with Rafael Dos Anjos. He's been in there with Tyron Wood. He's been in there with some of the high top caliber athletes, and he's been able not just to win, but actually dominate and put forth his game, his wrath of the ground and pound, the takedowns and the grind, and he's been able to beat these dudes. So, you know... Like I said, man, Kobe's Kobe's grind game is uh, is is just about as good as as anybody else, man. And uh, I I I wish I wish Jorge Masvidal the best on this fight. I really do. Yeah, because this beef is actual, real grade A beef. It seems a lot more intense than you and Moreno, or was it? Um, I think it's a lot more intense. I think with me and Moreno, I think I think we're both hurt from each other. I think we both like had so much love for each other that we're kind of like. We hurt each other in that sense, like me not picking him and then him going and training with uh, with Joe Benavides. And our, our relationship just kind of pretty much just ended like, you know what I mean? Like I never I never wish anything and it, even till now, Shmo, I never wish anything bad upon him, like anything, nothing. I've always I knew that he was always good to be champion. Like I've always knew that I've always said that since the beginning. But with with Masvidal and Kobe Covington, it's almost like. Kobe's coming out with his wife, like taking a picture with his ex-wife. I don't know if they're together, 
doing things like that, dude, like, man, I, I, there's one thing that Triple C doesn't do. He doesn't talk about family. He doesn't talk about religion, nor does he talk about anybody's kids, man. And Kobe takes it to that extent, man. So I think uh, I think this is real bad blood. And if they do talk to each other after the fight, I'm just like, man, I guess that's what sports really do. But I, I really highly doubt it the more I think about it. Yeah, the Schmo's not convinced we're going to get any handshakes or hugging out at the end of this one. Not convinced at all. We're talking about paying coaches. We're talking about living on each other's couches, eating each other's food. I mean, this is just a whole different type of level over here. <laughs> and it is, man. It's actually kind of funny because they're both, you know what I mean? They're both two good dudes talking shit to each other whichever way possible. You know, they're just, they're just throwing shit on the wall see what sticks, you know? Which is cool, man. It's entertainment. The cats are gonna love it. The people are gonna tune in. I think this fight's gonna do over a million pay-per-view buys. I really do. Well, with that said, let's get into the bronze medal moment for the rest of this fight card. UFC 272. Of all the fights, what are you most looking forward to seeing outside of this main event? The the only fight that really matters to me is that Dos Anjos uh, Fizyet, man. That Fizyet dude, that dude is a real deal, man. I've been I've seen him fight two times. Like, who is this guy? Dude, that's a future uh, 155, or is it 50, 55, right? Or 70? 55. Yeah, 55. That's a future contender there. And I think that's a that's a big step up. Not for him, for Rafael Dos Anjos, because ranking doesn't matter. When somebody's good, man, doesn't matter what number you are. Like, there's people that can contend already for the belt right now, and I believe he's one of them. Striking coach of Pewter Jan over in Thailand. Rafael Fiziev has got some of the strongest kicks the Schmoe's seen pound for pound in the UFC. We agree with you there. But the Schmoe's most looking forward to seeing this clash of styles in the featherweight division. Edson Barbosa, he's the measuring stick, it seems to be, in this division against Bryce Mitchell. Two contrasting styles. You got the guy who's just a specialist standing, and then you got Bryce Mitchell, who's a specialist with the BJJ on the ground with that twister. That was phenomenal over in Washington, D.C. Cannot wait because if Bryce Mitchell gets to this test of Edson Barbosa, he becomes automatically a legit contender, maybe one fight away from fighting for the 145-pound strap. So it's a really? huge test for him. You but can you make know what? You, but, but Yeah, but you know what, man? What Thug Nasty dude, like I, I, I like the dude. I think he's very – I like his accent. I like the fact that he likes to hunt squirrel. But really, man, he never fought my boy Dan Ige. And Dan Ige was barking up that tree for a minute. So just for the simple fact that he didn't fight 50K, Ige, I don't know, man. I'm cheering for Edson Barbosa for that reason. Anyways, if he does fight for the title, I do believe he's dangerous. I do believe he's probably going to be the... Uh, I do believe that he's probably going to be a favorite versus Edson Barbosa because he's a younger fighter. He's been at 145 pounds for that reason. But I just don't like the simple fact that he didn't fight my boy Ige. So whatever, man. That fight's whatever to me. Well, the Schmo didn't look at the bet online odds. We're going to pull this up right now. I would have thought Edson Barboza gets the favorite. But guess what? You can't skip ranks. You skip, can't skip people. He has to fight the cream of the crop in the division. I'm not saying he beats Edson. He gets the title shot. No, no. What I'm saying is he beats Edson. If he beats Edson, he gets one of those top contender fights. The Calvin Caters, the Dan Ige's. You can't avoid people like that. And who, Giga Chikadze. And he gets a fighter where he would put himself right in the position two fights away from fighting for a title, yeah, including I mean, this he, one getting that win. Yeah, he could. And I think, I think, uh, man, I think he's got a great style for anybody, but I don't see enough on him on the feet that really, that really makes me think, so, all right, man, he can knock somebody out. Like he's a grappler, man. He's taking people down. He's doing what he's doing. But at, at the top five, at the top best, at the top five, if you're not well-rounded, man, you're in trouble with in any division from flyweight all the way to heavyweight. There it is. So uh, the Schmo wants to get a couple of predictions out of you. Who wins between the two Rafaels, Dos Anjos and Fiziev in the co-main man, event? Who do you like? Man, I'm going with Fiziev, man. I just feel like he, he's his train is is going, and it's it, it's right now it's steaming, dude. It's steaming, and it's just it's running everybody over. So, you know, Dos Anjos has fought everybody of who's who's, but that, that's also the reason why I am going to go with Fiziev. Because he hasn't, he he doesn't have those mileages that uh, that Dos Anjos has. So that's my take. That's my bet. I'm going with Fiziet. All right. How about Kevin Holland against Alex Cowboy Oliveira? That's a fun fight. Two strikers. Go, 
going down is not always the answer, man. I like Kevin Holland. You know, he's he's part of the cringe mafia. But going down is not always the answer, man. It's about you being skilled and knowing the techniques. You got the right resources, man. You you've been to AKA, stay at AKA, work on those fundamentals of wrestling, and I think you can do something at the way that you want to continue to keep doing. That was middleweight. 170 is not the answer, dude. Those dudes are going to come just as vicious. You actually lose speed going down. You really do, man. Like, you don't get faster. You don't get stronger. You actually lose speed going down because of you don't have that twitch. You don't have that You don't have that thump no more. So I want to wish him luck. I think I think that's very admirable, the fact that he is going to 170 because I know it ain't easy, but that's not always the answer, Shmo. So for that reason, I'm going Charles Oliveira. Alex Oliveira. I'm Mr. sorry. Oliveira. I'm sorry. Alex Oliveira. Brazilians, but, it's all the same thing. Mexicans, what's up? But listen, some inside information from the schmo, and I don't think this is much inside information, but the guy doesn't have to do a weight cut at middleweight. He doesn't even weigh in at 185. He's like weighing in at 183 or 184 if you're lucky on fight days. He actually has to do a little bit of a weight cut to get to 170. If there's ever a reason to do these 10-pound weight increments, the 165, 75s, 85s, Kevin Holland would be the perfect candidate to be fighting at 175 pounds. So I don't think this is much of a big deal for Kevin Holland. He's the type of guy like Hamzat. He could fight at 170 or he could fight at 185. I think we're going to see an explosive Kevin Holland who had five wins in the calendar year for 2020, did not get in the win column of 2021. He's got to start things right. He's got to get a victory here. He needs it more. That's why the schmo kind of sides with him in this type of fight. Oh, um, and that's your take, schmo. I disagree with you. It's okay. We can't agree King all the time. Triple C. You know, now, what, what do, you know what, schmo? Why don't we put some push-ups on it? How about that? All right. Let's do that. How many push-ups are we going to bet on that fight? You yeah, give us but no, 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 no. Push-ups on a but, but loser has to put a Speedo and do about 50 push-ups. What Deal. do you think about that? Speedo, 50 push-ups. If Cowboy wins, the Schmo oh. does 50 push-ups in a Speedo. If Speed Holland wins, you're doing Speed 50. That's fine. Speedo while eating Cheetos. Can we do that? All right, we could do that. All right. All right. Flaming Deal. hot Cheetos or regular? Just regular. That can be whatever you want. I guess we got a 50 push-up challenge. Cheetos. And push-ups. Here it is, as, ladies no, and gentlemen. As, as you do push-ups, you're going to be eating Cheetos, dude. There it is. We, we, we got to keep it cringe. We got to keep it cringe. Got to keep it cringe. And speaking of keeping it cringe, let's go back to the King's List. You did such a great job giving your top five fighters in UFC history. Now let's rank the double champs in MMA history. Let's include Pride. Let's include Bellator. So the Schmo's going to give you some names and let's get some rankings. Hendo, Dan Henderson, Conor McGregor, Daniel Cormier, Amanda Nunes, Ryan Bader, Patricio Pippo Ferreira, and Henry Cejudo, yours truly. Okay, well, here we go with number one. You know I have to go with, with none other than the Triple C, Henry Cejudo. I beat three Hall of Famers going into my fight. Demetrius, this isn't just our career, but when we won the belts and we defended the belts. This is the reason why I'm the greatest champ champ ever in UFC history. Demetrius Johnson won my belt, defended it with, with, uh, with TJ Dillashaw, beat the number one contender that was knocking everybody out, and Marlon Marias. He knocked out his last three opponents in round one, stopping him, and then going and then defending my body against Dominic Snooze and beating him too, knocking him out in the second round. There is an integrated champ champ. You may not like me, hate the cringe, but anyways, number two, I'm going to have to go with Dan Henderson. Dan Henderson, at that time, it was pride. Pride was, pride was tougher than UFC, especially in those weight divisions. He ended up knocking out Fader for his second belt. So for that reason, I'm going to have to go number two, Dan Henderson. Number three, how can I forget about my Olympic teammate, Daniel Cormier? Even though he didn't beat John Jones, and even, only, and even though he didn't get a chance to get a crack out of Stipe the last couple of times and he lost to him, that's the only reason why I'm putting him number three. And number four, I'm going to have to go with Patricia Ferreira. Yeah, he's Bellator. People underestimated, but look at how he wipes people out, man. At 145 pounds, Michael Chandler only lasted a minute 20 with this man. This is how good this dude is. He is a technical savage. Yeah, he lost to AJ McKee, but in their prime when he had both of his belts. And the only reason why I don't put Patricia Fair a little higher is the simple fact that he didn't defend his 55-pound belt. That's the only reason why. If not, in my eyes, he'd probably be number two behind me. But I tell you what, Shmo, you tell me to rank my top four but if I was to rank just another one, I would actually literally give it to Conor McGregor. 
And think about it too, Shmo. His greatest win, even till today, is against Jose Aldo. That's his greatest win. Can you name a bigger name that he's beaten? Not celebrities, not Nate Diaz, not these popular likeness type guys. I'm talking about literally as competitors. His greatest win is against Jose Aldo. He did it in fashion. And he knocked him out in 13 seconds. You know, he, he did beat uh, Chad Mendes at that time, but the dude was on a damn fishing trip when he got called out for that fight. He never really fought a wrestler, and when he did fight a wrestler and could beat Mergamadov, we saw how that went. So that being said, Shmo, I, I, if I was to add just another one, I would, I would literally have to give Conor McTapper number five. Well, did Hendo defend both belts like you and DC? Because you and DC... Champ champs and defended your belts in your respective weight divisions. That's why the schmo has you guys one and two. Yeah, but you know what? That's why I, that, I, I want to. I, I don't know if, who 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 was it that I, I. The only reason why I said this because at that time he did knock out Fedor Lemonenko, uh, man, and he knocked out the pound for pound king, and man, that just puts you in another position, man. And especially at the A's, like I put everything that's that's been with Dan Henderson and the way he was doing. I believe he beat for the light heavyweight. I believe he beat. I, I do believe he beat Vanderlei Silva, who was also the number one ranked guy in the world. And then he goes up to heavyweight and he knocks out Fedor Melanenko. Man, Schmo, it's hard for me to not put a number two as much as I like Daniel. And the only reason why I put Daniel number three is because he never beat Jones and he lost it steep it twice. Just because you have these titles of you defending and being the first to ever do it doesn't mean you're the greatest. And right now, you know what we're talking about, Schmo? We're talking about who is the greatest champ champ ever. And you're talking to him right now, and his name is Triple C. We love it. We also just want to give a shout-out to Randy Couture because we're talked about pioneers in this sport. Randy Couture, certainly a pioneer as well. By the way, this week in Triple C history, MMA debut. You beat Michael Poe. March 2nd, 2013. Congratulations, Triple C. Here we are, nine years later. Yeah, no, of course. I mean, I tell you what, Shmo, I don't think I've ever been so nervous for a fight or a competition like I was in my debut because it was new to me. I remember laying in my damn motel bed, not even a hotel, my motel bed. It was my first fight, and I'm just like, what the hell am I doing, dude? I'm about to fight a dude that just... He's got X amount of losses, and I, and I watch a video on him, and the dude literally turns his back, and when he turns his back, he comes at you at full force. So he either wipes you out within the first two minutes or 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 he's going to get grounded and pound. That's exactly what happened. But in that fight, man, he threw a flying knee, and he ended up dropping me, dude. He ended up dropping I remember seeing my head spin, and I remember just going straight for the takedown, literally ground and pound this dude for the finish. So... Fun thought, Schmo. That was my most nerve-wracking fight ever in history. It wasn't even against Demetrius. It was my debut with Michael Hansung Po. And now, nine years later, you go from the motel to the Schmotel. You're a future Hall of Famer, and the rest is history, yeah? Yes, yes. Look at all this gold, Schmo. Look at all this gold, man. It's a lot of gold. It's I got, gold. I, I got gold everywhere, man. The greatest gold digger to ever live. And we appreciate you all tuning in each and every week. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast. Download wherever you listen to your podcast. When I say subscribe, the Schmo says subscribe. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. What's your name? I am Triple C. I am the Schmo. We will deliver. And we are. Ah.